morning. Our order of service this morning is Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184. We sing the first three verses of hymn 677. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and as the sin of your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro is printed in the bulletin. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white. 
white and the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first reading for the Feast of All Saints is from the Revelation to St. John, the seventh chapter. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. 
and all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again from the of the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated when we sing verses 4 through 8 of hymn 677.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our text for this morning is the epistle lesson from 1 John chapter 3, which was just read. All Saints Day is a festival day in the church year. I pray that it will bring great comfort to you. For comfort comes through the promise that what to the world appears to be a loss becomes a transition for the Christian. John reminds us that the world will bring trouble. It can do no else. And those who are children of God, though, have already received the promised hope. They've received the promise that death holds no longer any victory. We have this hope in the one who became man to take away our sins, to make us his children. Our hope as God's children is in Jesus Christ. But that hope is always under attack. It's attacked by the world, by our own sinful flesh, and by satanic lies. At the time of John's writing, the church continued to suffer attacks from both Jewish and Gentile religions. Many apostles had been martyred by this time, some quite gruesomely. And now, 2,000 years later, Christians around the world are still being martyred. Here in the United States, we have so far seen only a nominal threat. But it appears the future could bring greater hostility, greater persecution for believers of Christ Jesus. And that can erode hope. Besides open persecution, secular forces have eroded confidence in the biblical narratives, trying to convince us that God's word is not what it seems to be. They deny the miracles presented in scripture, the virgin birth, miraculous healings, exorcisms, Jesus' resurrection, life after death even divine creation. And always, death, disease, and suffering surround us. Life is hard, and this year has certainly been hard on everyone. Some have lost loved ones. We're all touched by the virus and pandemic going around. And it causes a continual degeneration of the hope that is in us, the hope we have towards the world, sometimes even towards the promises of God. And if the world were not enough, our hope is also attacked by our own sinful condition. No matter how hard we try to cling to the promises of God and to the hope that such promises bring, We continue to find ourselves questioning whether such promises are really meant for me. We recognize our sinfulness. And sometimes we get to thinking, can God really forgive what I've done, what I've said, what I've thought? We tend to think that our particular sin is so bad that not even God can forgive what we have done. God promises forgiveness from all our sins. He gives us the hope of everlasting life. And that hope is constantly under attack also by the devil and his demons. The devil is the accuser who will not let our sin go unchallenged, who places those doubts in our minds. But he has been defeated. John reminds us of this in the 12th chapter of Revelation. 
Now the salvation and the power of the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives even unto death. The devil continually seeks to separate us from the promises of God. Continually seeks to get us to despair. The question that he asked Eve in the garden still haunts us. Did God actually say the world in our own sinful condition to continue to tell us lies that we often believe? The devil then uses these lies to cause a questioning of God's promises and a questioning of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. As Christians, we face spiritual weakness. It's important to recognize that. Too often, we fail to share those weaknesses all with others. And that can lead to self-doubt. Why do I struggle so much when other Christians seem to be doing so well? We might even wonder, am I really a child of God? Yes, you are. In baptism, you are called children of God. You are called to carry one another's burdens as we support and encourage one another in faith. Instead of looking internally for our hope, we must seek the truth of who we are in Christ Jesus. For hope that is self-applied always fails us. Real hope can never be found inside ourselves or in the conditions we observe in our lives. The only hope that's guaranteed is the hope that sees what's been done completely outside ourself, completely for us by God himself. A hope that sees in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our future. Only in Jesus, only through the eyes of faith, will we really retain the hope that sustains us. Here's what the eyes of faith see. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The eyes of faith are really ears of faith that simply hear and believe what God says. Children of God, and so we are. What love the Father has given us, not deserved, not earned, but lavished upon us without any merit or worthiness in us. A love we've received as a pure gift from our Father in heaven. Yes, we are children of God. The Father has called us through his Son, Jesus Christ. We've been incorporated into the family of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the word and the water of holy baptism. And that remains true even though the world does not know us. When things go badly, when enemies attack us, we might think that that means that we are no longer children of God. But John reminds us how the world treated Jesus. Rejection, torture, death. And if the world has treated Jesus in such a way, the children of God should not expect any better. But amid such suffering, John urges us to look past the suffering, past the persecution, past the temptations of the devil. Look to the cross. Look to Jesus' death and to the tomb, to the resurrection. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. The love that we have is a pure gift from our Father in heaven 
given to us through the death and the resurrection of his son jesus and therefore we are children of god in jesus we have our hope we have a hope beyond this life for we know that we shall be like jesus and one of these days jesus is going to appear again in glory coming back from heaven for all to see. We don't know everything about that day or what life will be like afterward, but we do know that our bodies will be raised. Our own real physical human bodies and that our bodies and all the bodies of the saints, all those who have died in faith in Christ Jesus will be glorified will be like his glorious body to live together with him forever. This is certain because our hope is founded on the reality of Jesus' incarnation and divinity. It's founded on the fact that he completed everything that was incomplete within us. He entered our world and in our stead, he became sin for us. He carried our sin to the cross, to his death, buried it in the tomb and left it there so that in his resurrection, the sin, death, and the devil that cling to us would be removed and purified. Jesus died once for all so that we won't die eternally. Our purity is based on Jesus' righteousness. Our sin is washed away by faith through Jesus' blood. And while we continue to sin in this life, Jesus continues to cover our sin with his death and resurrection. He has completed the work of our salvation. And now we have not only a historical promise but through the divine service, he continues to deliver that promise to us. The forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. As we eat his body and drink his blood, he strengthens us to go forth in this life. And that forgiveness empties us of the lies from the devil, the world, and our doubts. John does not let us forget who we are in Christ Jesus. Jesus' forgiveness is perfect, apart from anything within us. This is the hope we have received as children of God, a hope that sustains because of Christ's righteousness. Neff's message offers hope to all as we remember those today who died this past year. Michelle, Charles, Milton, Lucille, Reuben, Donnie, Gladys, and Curtis, along with all those who have died in the faith in the past. And as Lutherans, we understand that we don't focus on the spiritual power or piety of those who've died. We know there's nothing laudable in any of us before a righteous and perfect God. But we rejoice that those we love are with Jesus because of what he has done. And soon we will all gather before the throne of God. For the promise of scripture is for all of God's children. And therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living, God, of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. We go forth today and every day, knowing that our salvation our forgiveness, our hope is built on this promise that will never fail us. For we are in Jesus and he is 
in us death has been defeated in his death and resurrection and we are incorporated into this promise of the water of holy baptism and so we know that we live even though we die amen and may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the singing of the offertory. In our prayers, we remember those who have died in the last year. Uh, besides those listed here, Charles Bonert and Michelle Kaufman also passed away since last November 1st and were inadvertently admitted. We also uh, ask God's protection on Claire Yokely as she uh, has left this morning to join the Army. And she begins boot camp tonight. We rise for prayer. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, our only help in time of need, we give thanks to you for the host of saints who have gone before us, who have given us, passed down your word, and who are now with you in heaven. We, rem we remember especially today those in our congregation who have passed away. Michelle Kaufman, Charles Bonert, Milton Schlimpert, Lucille Schlichting, Reuben Wachter, Donnie Betcher, Gladys Abernathy, and Curtis Kaufman. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the witness that they were among us and for the faith that they passed down to their children. We ask you to be with those who mourn these losses and comfort them in the sure and certain hope that you are the resurrection and the life. We also pray for those who are suffering from COVID. And we give thanks, O oh Lord, that uh, Julie Abernathy is doing much better now. And pray that you would continue to improve her condition, that she can get off the ventilator and, and be breathing on her own. Guard and protect all those who are sick with only the, with the protection which only you can. And O oh Lord, we give thanks to you that you have called us to serve in many and diverse places. We ask you to believe, be with Claire now as she begins service in the army. Guard and protect her during this time of boot camp and beyond, a she, uh, beyond her service. We thank you that when we have been brought low, you raised us up. That when the enemies came in like a flood, you lifted up a standard against them. We thank you for the forgiveness that you've offered. And thank you for your blessed gospel, the forgiveness of sins, free justification, and eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for all your people and ask you to bless them wherever you have sent them. 
We ask you to bless our President and, and the Congress of these United States. And bless our nation, O oh Lord, as we go to the polls this week to elect our President and representatives. May we elect people who are pleasing to you and who will do your will in all that they do. O oh, you to whom all power in heaven and earth is given, put on the robes of your imperial majesty, take up the unlimited scepter which your almighty Father has bequeathed you, and come, that the whole earth may be speedily filled with your glory. Enliven us, O oh Lord, and all your professing people by the renewing power of the Holy Spirit, that when you do come in the glory of your majesty, we may be found to be of you a true and faithful servant, and to be graciously admitted into the joy of your kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, and thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Closing hymn is number 685. 